everyone. Thank you for joining us this month as we continue our series on taking the lead and how leaders are out front like the Grand Marshal of the parade, showing everyone the way. And legendary leaders of the Old Testament are showing us how to be great leaders and that we can be too. And this month we're learning everyone can be a leader. God gives me courage to lead. God helps me learn from my mistakes. And God gives me leaders that I can follow. And we have a memory verse this month. It's Micah 6, 8. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. So practice those memory verses and let's jump into some singing. Got the whole world in his hands. He's 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 got the mommies and the daddies in his hands. He's got the mommies and the daddies in his hands. He's got the mommies and the daddies. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the itty bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the itty bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the itty bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the brothers and the sisters. In his hands, he's got the brothers and the sisters. In his hands, he's got the brothers and the sisters. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. And thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Let us all with one accord sing praises to Christ the Lord. Let us all unite in song and praise Him all day long. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please reveal your will for me so I can serve you for eternity. Use my life in every way. Take hold of it today. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Chicken Nuggets, it's me, Carl. And I'm Andy. And welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. Hey Carl, how you doing? Well, I'm doing as good as a fox wearing yoga pants on a train in the Netherlands. So... Great. Doing great. Okay, awesome. So what's that? Oh, this? You've never seen a mystery music jar before? Can't say I have. What does it do? Well, whatever feeling you're having, it plays that kind of music. It can sense what you're feeling and send a song to match it. Kind of like a song hug, but without the actual hugging. Does it have batteries? Nope. Electrical cords? Nope. Then how does it work? I told you, Andy, it's a mystery music jar. Watch, I'll have it play a happy song. And if I want a sad type of song. I felt that, right here. Or perhaps a song to get me prepared for battle. Or a song if I by chance see an extra chicken nugget at the bottom of my bag. Mm. 
That was that was really good. Can I try? <laughs> Here we go. I don't like this game. You know what else it does? It also plays inspirational music. So anytime you want to give an inspirational speech, you just open this thing up. Watch. Pineapples. Aren't they crazy? They look like they're from out of this world. Who knew that they're not? They're from this world. Pineapples are crazy. You know what else is crazy? Aliens. They scare me. I don't know whether or not I believe in them, but what? The Statue of Liberty. Paul Bunyan. Trees. Cut wood. And Tabasco sauce. Oh, hey, Jada. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Wait. Have you been crying? No. Yes. Yes, he has. Don't let him fool you. What are you up to, Jada? Oh, no, not a lot. Just checking in to make sure you guys read this story for this week, because we are about to go through it now. Yes, <laughs> of course we read the story. Why didn't you remind me? Oh yeah, um, I really love the story. The story was super cool. I loved when that person did that thing, and then when Moses was, came out of nowhere, I was like, ah, and did that one super specific thing that we all remember. Yep. Moses wasn't in this story. Well, I think what Andy was trying to say is Moses loved God, and since he loved God, God is everywhere. And okay, we didn't read the story. <laughs> it's okay, guys. I can tell you all about it. Open up your Bible to Ruth chapter 1, Carl. Now, there was a woman named Naomi, but sadly, her husband had passed away. Oh, that is sad. Did she have any other family? She did. Two sons. Oh, that's good. But they died, too. <gasps> so let me get this straight. Naomi lost both of her sons and her husband. Why would you tell the story with such a sad ending, Jada? Guys... We're only at the beginning. Oh, carry on. So Naomi was obviously upset about losing her husband and two sons and wanted to move back to her hometown. Oh, by herself? Well, her sons each had a wife, so she still had her two daughters-in-law, and one of them was named Ruth. Hey, that's the name of the book. Good catch, Andy. Thanks, Carl. Now, Ruth didn't know a lot about God, but she did love her mother-in-law. And even though she could easily go back to her mother and family, for some reason, she felt she needed to stay with Naomi. Well, what did Naomi say about that? Well, she loved her daughters-in-law, but she felt they'd be better off if they went back to their own families. But Ruth, she clung to Naomi. Did the other sister-in-law go back to her family? She did, but Ruth wouldn't. It was actually really cool. Ruth looked at Naomi and told her she would follow her. Follow her? What does that mean? Like, walk behind her? Kinda. Ruth said that she would go where Naomi went and she would worship the God that Naomi did. She was committed to following Naomi for the rest of her life. Wow, that's real devotion. It really is. I wonder why she did that. Well, both of them had experienced terrible loss. And Ruth, being the younger one, looked up to Naomi as someone she trusted a leader. So Naomi was Ruth's leader? Yeah, in a way. Ruth decided to put her trust in Naomi and it ultimately worked out because God took care of them. Ruth even found a new husband. Wow, how awesome is it that Naomi was there for Ruth? And that Ruth was there for Naomi. It's very cool. And that's why I wanted us to read this story because no matter where we are in life or what we go through, we will always have people to help us and lead us. That is some good news. I love knowing that God can give me leaders that I can follow. Amen to that. <laughs> Landy, that's your cue. Oh yeah, uh, that's our big idea. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. <laughs> Today's big idea is God can give me leaders I can follow. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. God, God can, can give, give me leaders, leaders I can follow. I can follow. Yeah, right. you hear that, Andy? Wonderful. God can do that. He can. <laughs> what? All right, Andy, we've learned a lot today. Yep. I think this calls for a celebration. All right, let's go. Oh, sorry. See you next week, kids!
you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Boys and girls. So we're finishing out our series, Take the Lead, with Ruth. And Ruth is a cool story um, because it has a lot of cool characters. It has Ruth, it has Naomi, it has Boaz, and God uses each one in that story, right? So last week we talked about Samson and we talked about his, how Israel kept making bad choices, right? And kept getting in this cycle of not obeying and then needing help. And we talked about how Samson wasn't the best guy. He didn't make the best choices, but God could still use him. And Ruth is a totally different story. Ruth is a story of how God can just use ordinary people. And God rewards faithfulness. That's something we learned about last year in our Kids of Integrity series. We learned about what it means to be a faithful friend and to have faithfulness in our relationship with God. Right? That means that we trust God to take care of us and we are faithful and loyal to our friends and we stick with them. Right? And we see all this in this story. Ruth is very faithful to Naomi. Right? Something terrible happens to Naomi's family. Her husband dies and her sons die. And it's so sad. And Naomi is now all alone. And the women who married her sons they should go back to their own families, right? So they can remarry. But Ruth says, no, I'm going to leave my family. I'm going to leave all my friends. I'm going to leave all the places I know. And I'm going to go with you to your homeland, to a place I've never been. To a whole new set of things that she's never done or heard about. Just so she can take care of Naomi. So Naomi is not alone. That is very faithful. And God can use that faithfulness and reward that faithfulness, right? And Naomi helps Ruth so much. She gives her great advice. And she takes care of her. And she helps guide her ways. And so Naomi is an amazing leader to Ruth, right? And then Boaz takes such great care of them both, right? He redeems them. He marries Ruth. They start a family, and generations later, David is born. And that is awesome. God used them in his plan and his story. They were just ordinary people, just normal people going about their life. But because they were faithful, God used them in an amazing way. And I think that's awesome, right? We can strive to be faithful. We can strive to be faithful friends. We can strive to be faithful to God and to trust that he will always take care of us and always provide. There was a while there where it looked a little dark for Naomi and Ruth, right? They arrived in this new land. They had no family. They had nobody to take care of them. They had no jobs. They were women. But God provided. Ruth was able to follow behind in the fields and glean some wheat. And from that, God used it to help meet Boaz. And Boaz took care of her, right? So even when things looked dark and bleak, have faith that God is with you and God is providing for you and God will take care of you because that's what faithfulness is, trusting in God that he loves us and will take care of us. And we can be faithful people. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for all of the great examples in the Bible of leaders. God, thank you for showing us leaders who overcame fear, leaders who obeyed you and followed your lead. And thank you for even showing us leaders who weren't super great people, but you use them anyway, God. And thank you for the story of Ruth. Thank you for showing us and reminding us how to be faithful to you and faithful to each other, God. And thank you that you bless that faithfulness, God, and that you always provide for us. We love you and we pray all this in your son's name. Amen. See you guys next week.